Okay, so we're back now and we're going to be looking at the embroidery screens on the Designer Ruby 90. Now, I don't need to put the embroidery unit on to look at the screen. So just for the sake of filming, I'm just going to um, be showing you the screens for that. So to get into embroidery mode, there is a little toggle up here in the right hand corner that's got a hoop with an arrow in it. And that'll take us to the embroidery mode. Okay, so your embroidery edit screen will come up with that now. So we can see Wi-Fi and cloud, our start screen, and we've got a view up here of all the different elements. So this is your project. If you have selected a project from your knowledge center, then this is how it opens up. The next one is stitches that are able to be used in your embroidery, okay? So these are your stitches and a lot of these stitches can come into your embroidery side, okay? So if you want to do, use some stitches for in the embroidery hoop, then away you go, you can use them here. Embroidery fonts, oops, I touched the wrong one. These are your embroidery fonts. Okay, and they're all in different sizes. So they're something to go through and have a look. Some of them have two elements of two sizes. Some of them have three. Okay, so when we have fonts, it's best to have them in individual sizes because of the satin stitch. So we have like a small or a medium or a small, medium and large. Um, and that um, helps when it stitches out. Okay, so that's your embroidery fonts. These ones with the flower on its own are the all the designs that are in the machine. So you can swipe them and scroll them to the bottom of each menu item. And down here it's got menu items, okay? So A are your signature designs. So there's quite a few signature designs in there. Um, then we've got B is your golden collection so there's quite a few c's kids designs d is themes e is quilt f is frames and borders and there's a lot of those g is fantasy design so there's some really interesting ones in there h is holiday designs lace then k is for kitchen and home decorative heart and butterflies M is flowers, and you go through and you can see. So that it goes right up to M, N, and they're your mini or your small designs, okay? Or you can go through and select the menu this way, and then you can go through and select and view all of your designs coming up in here, okay? Some nice sewing ones in here as well. Okay, so that's your design. So it's the flower. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a subscription to MySoNet, and this can come with your machine registration. Now, it depends on the machine. My MySoNet, I have, as a dealer, I have access to the MySoNet library. And if you see this symbol with a design and the world symbol on it, and it's active, that means you have it too. Now it could only be for a short time. It could be just to show you what is available. Normally with um, the MySonet library, you need to pay for the design uh, when you purchase it. But for a limited time, some machines allow you a subscription to view them and to use them. So if, for example, if I wanted to, if I went in here and I saw that design, it comes up like it comes directly to me okay because I have access to the library so if I wanted uh, this holly design on oh, is it that's holly that's couching let's find something a little more interesting so here is this design 
or I can get a better view of it. So this gives you a bigger, a better view or I can use my pinch to view a little bit closer up. So there's some really interesting designs in the library. So if you're lucky enough to have access, um, you can just touch on them and they will go into or on your screen, ready for you to embroider out. They only stay there while you have, they're an encrypted file, so you can't keep them. Um, you can only do it while you have access to the library. So if for some reason the subscription ends or your access period ends, then you may not be able to use them anymore. But there's some interesting designs in there and you can search. But if, you, if this is active, once you've signed into MySonet, then um, you'll be able to have a look at those. But like I said, it could only be for a limited time. And then if I have anything saved in my own MySonet, then I'll be able to view that on the machine. If you've got your design saved in your MySonet folder, then you'll be able to access them here. Okay, someone was asking about what kind of file types it reads. Okay, um, and I will tell you all the formats and I'll put them up on the screen maybe. How's that? So basically, whatever machine you, whatever, if you've chosen Husqvarna for the first time and you have lots of designs that you purchased previously and they're in a different format or if you have a multi-formatted USB or CD or whatever that you've purchased previously, you'll be definitely able to open quite a few different file types here, okay, without having to change them over. So in the embroidery screen, okay, so we have the elements of our layers here. I'll show you that in a second. Our hoop options. So if we touch this, all of our hoop options will appear. We can look at our whole design or the whole hoop. Okay, so these are our viewing options. But I can go in and I can use my slider to go in and do my viewing. Okay, we'll get a bigger shot of that shortly. This will tell me um, the number of stitches in the design and how many colours. There's nothing up there at the moment. I can turn my grid on and off. And if I hold it, so I can go in and I can have my grid, grid options. I can do a quarter inch grid. Okay. Or I could do just hold it. And I can change. If I go in my grid, I can change my background color. So say I'm going to be doing green. I can see in my hoop what my fabric's going to look like so that I can look at my colors as they come into the hoop. All right. All I need to do is go back into my grid and change it out when I'm done. Okay. Um, down the bottom, we have a lot of our editing. Um, once a design comes in, we'll be able to see it. So I'm going to bring a design in just from the machine. And okay, let me just put one of these in. Okay, so the other thing I can do is drag with my finger where it needs to be, or I can center it in the hoop just using the wheel and using my centering function there. If the design is outside the hoop, you'll get a red outline of the hoop. And this tab will come active, which is bring the design inside the hoop. And it'll just bring it inside the hoop boundaries. Um, I can mirror image it top to bottom. I can duplicate it and then drag it. Whatever's active has these little, this little window um, and the red dots around. I can rotate 
just by touching the, the dot on top. And the good thing is I've got this key that looks like it's an arrow with a circle. I can go back if I did, did something silly. Um, so if I want to move the design, I touch this guy here and I can move it. If I touch the rotation and I touch the rotation and then I can do, use my little wheel to turn it one degree at a time. Okay, if I use my resize, so a rescale, I can, whoops, rescale it up to 20% plus or minus. That's as far as it'll go. And then I can pan the background. So say that I've got a really close up view of the hoop, I can just move the hoop so I can see what's happening. Okay. Now what this does, it tells me that there's 24,946 stitches in this design. Okay. And if I use my I forget key, and this is the stitch out order. So there is only one design on the screen. So if I decided that I wanted to put some lettering in, as most of us put on design and lettering, we go touch the font and we go flower. So as I'm doing it, it's dynamic, dynamically um, putting it up on the screen. Oops, touch the wrong button. Now I'll close that off to be able to see where I've got that. So if I want to move it, I can move it to where I want to put it. I can turn just with some, a little rotation there if I want, or I could go back and it would put it back where it was. So now I've got my two designs in there. I'm going to show you a little bit about this particular menu here. So I have, I can select all my designs or I can select one, two or three, depending on how many I've got. I can, that's called multi-select. I can select all and it will select all the designs that I have and I might be able to group them or ungroup them using the next button down. Okay. So this only becomes active when I've got more than two designs uh, selected. If I said I didn't want to stitch this first, but I wanted to stitch this one, I can move that design to be stitched after the flower by selecting it and using this button that's, that's pointing down. And what that means is it's moved the, the stitch out position from first to second. Okay, so now when we go to embroidery mode, it won't let me do it because I haven't got the embroidery unit on. This will stitch first and then that one will. Okay, because that's the design order that is on the screen here. So whatever order these guys line up in this film strip, that's how they're going to stitch out. So if I decided, no, I really want it to stitch first, I can highlight the design in the film strip and then now there's an arrow that can point it is pointing up to mean to go up in the order and it's brought it back in the film strip to stitch first that's how that one works so the other features I've got is I can delete if I delete touch it once it deletes everything um, I can delete one design or if I hold it it asks me if I want to delete all the designs I can copy, okay, and then I can this is the text and this is the programming of the text. I can make it go a little bit fun. 
I can make it sit on, um, uh, you know, make it a little bit curvy. I can make the design sit inside a curve and you can see all the different ones. I can just make it be straight. So that's the fun thing we can do with that when you're happy. The other one we can do is look at when we've got a curve, right, how we want the design to sit. So this is what this one does. So we can make it run with the shape of the curve or we can have the lettering standing quite straight. So that's the difference. You can see that all the letters are straight. So we'll make a difference if we made this curve a little bit more acute that you will see what I mean about those. So sometimes having your letters um, go on a different angle or axis is really good. So when I'm happy, you just go tick. All right. So that is for your lettering. So that only becomes active when I've selected font. So you can't do that with these particular ones. Um, so pretty much that's all of your embroidery edit screen. There's some other features down the bottom here, which is you can send this to another Wi-Fi enabled machine. I'm going to go down to camera four and see if I can get a better shot. There we go. So we can save it. We can save it. Um, to a smart save so that when the machine turns on again I've actually got this saved. Normally this um, does a smart save when um, say the machine's on and has to turn off 